Happy Friday, everyone, and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week. As always, I'm your host and security aficionado, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting April 15th, 2013. I'll start today's episode with a story about a WordPress password cracking campaign. Over the week, a botnet that was probably 90,000 victim computers strong launched a password brute forcing attack against many different WordPress sites. WordPress, of course, is a content management system uh, that you can get for free to host a blog page on a website. In any case, a botnet has been targeting WordPress sites, looking for sites that use the default uh, username of admin. And if it finds a site that uses admin as the username, it tries to brute force the password for that particular site to gain access to the WordPress administrative console. Now, WordPress is an often targeted uh, package simply because it's very, very popular and has occasionally suffered from vulnerabilities. So again, if you're a WordPress administrator, be sure to update the package regularly. Don't use Use the default admin username and be sure to use strong passwords. A quick update for one of last week's stories. You're probably aware that last week was Microsoft Patch Day and they released a whole bunch of security updates that day. Uh, however, recent news suggests that one of those updates, MS 013036, which was an update fixing a uh, flaw or flaws in the kernel driver that comes with Windows. Uh, this update suffered from some sort of problem. Essentially, people that installed this update that may have either had Kaspersky's uh, anti-malware products or maybe a specific banking plugin had some sort of conflict with this particular update that may have led to some sort of system errors as they booted their system. So if you had any problems with last week's patches, definitely check out the latest updates from Microsoft as they'll probably fix this issue. Furthermore, this is proof of why you should always test Microsoft's updates before deploying them throughout your network. In more update news, the biggest story this week was probably Oracle's critical patch update. Every quarter, Oracle releases a, a big patch update to fix vulnerabilities in all of their products. Uh, this month, Oracle released the critical patch update for April, which fixed 128 vulnerabilities in a wide range of their products. Products including uh, their database services, their HTTP server, some of their business e-servers, and some Sun products and even MySQL. So many, many different Oracle uh, products. More importantly, they they also fixed vulnerabilities in Java itself. The latest Java update fixes 42 vulnerabilities in the very popular web plugin, and 19 of those vulnerabilities have a CVE rating of 10, which is the maximum, meaning they're very, very dangerous vulnerabilities. So if you're an Oracle user, you definitely want to check out this critical patch update and uh, apply any of the corresponding updates. At the very least, almost everyone out there uses Java. So if you use Java, you want to update it immediately. Another big story of the week comes from the Independent Security Evaluators. This group released a security study describing some vulnerabilities in some very common small office, home office routers. So these are the type of consumer routers you probably use at home uh, that you may have even gotten from your ISP. Anyways, they studied 13 of these uh, routers, ones that came from Linksys, Netgear, D-Link, and some other common providers. And they found that all 13 of these routers suffered from some sort of security vulnerability. More specifically, all 13 of the routers suffered from uh, LAN vulnerabilities, vulnerabilities on the local network that attackers may be able to take advantage of to get access to the router. But more concerning than this, 11 of the 13 routers suffered from WAN or external vulnerabilities. So these are flaws that outside attackers might take advantage of to gain uh, unauthorized access to your router. 
router. Furthermore, attackers could leverage two of these WAN or external vulnerabilities without any sort of authentication. Uh, so very, very dangerous flaws. Now this isn't the first time we've heard of uh, vulnerabilities in consumer routers, but it's more evidence that goes to show that these routers do suffer from vulnerabilities and that manufacturers need to make sure to keep them uh, up to date and secure. As a consumer, by the way, there's really nothing you can do to configure these routers to avoid these vulnerabilities. But what you can do is pay attention to firmware updates. I suspect a lot of consumers don't realize they can update their gateway router, but if you access its web-based uh, management interface, they usually have a firmware update uh, link or button somewhere on that interface. And I really recommend you check out your router every month or so and update it if it has any new firmware available. So let me end with two scam topics you'll probably see leveraged in emails, instant messaging, and social network attacks in the next few days. As I'm sure you're aware, there were two unfortunate explosion and bombing incidents in the U.S. this week. Uh, first of all, the Boston Marathon uh, was bombed, a very sad incident, and our hearts go out to the victims of those bombings. On top of that, there was an unfortunate uh, accidental explosion at a Texas fertilizer plant. And again, our hearts go out to any of the, the survivors and victims of that unfortunate accident. In both cases, disgusting and conscienceless attackers are already leveraging these headlines in their scam and spam emails. Uh, they're using them as a draw to get people to either react to their emails or click on links uh, that may be too malicious drive-by download sites and things like that. So as I'm sure we're all trying to figure out what happened in both of these unfortunate incidents, I need to warn you to be very careful which emails you actually interact with if they use this uh, Texas explosion or the Boston Marathon bombing in their uh, subject matter. You might want to take a closer look at any of the links in these sorts of emails and maybe don't click on links in emails at all. Uh, if you're interested in news about these stories, maybe you should directly visit it uh, via the news organization you're interested in. So that's it for this week's security news. Uh, if you'd like more security information, be sure to follow the WatchGuard Security Center blog where I post this video and I'll also post more links to other security news stories from this week. Also, next week I plan on traveling to InfoSec UK, so while I'll try to post this video, it may not arrive at its same time. It may be either a bit early or a bit late. And as always, if you'd like more regular security news, you can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at SecAdept, or follow WatchGuard at WatchGuardTech. Thank you for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you. <laughs>